Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Slick Moth back again with another video, and can we just take a moment, take one moment to thank Callum for this excellent visual that he made, I guess I don't know what else to call it, Batman, he made it for um, Batman Day, which was yesterday, um, Saturday, September 26th, for those of you who didn't know, it was Batman Day. Uh, International Batman Day, and you can see this is so cool. You have the bat signal and the center plate set of the bat signal. It's my logo, which is very cool. And then on the belt, and uh, you have an S for Slick Moth. That's very cool. This so thanks again to uh, Callum, aka Legend Retro, on Twitter for making this. So getting into today's video, yesterday I watched a video from EGP Gaming, and for those of you who don't know, he is a prevalent Batman Arkham Knight commentator and YouTuber, and he's someone that I've enjoyed watching his videos historically as well. Essentially, he recounted his thoughts of Batman Arkham Knight, and he summarized, was the game a letdown, or was it not? If I had to sum up his thesis basically in like 10-15 seconds, this is the best I can really do, what I would say, and I encourage you to watch it in the description below, I'll be sure to link it as well, basically what he said was that he liked the game, it was a good game, he maybe had his expectations too high for it, but something didn't really feel right upon completing the game, and it maybe didn't fulfill his expectations as to what they were going into the game. One thing I do kind of disagree with him on is the boss battles, and he said that one of the things he didn't like about the game was that there wasn't any boss battles, or if there was any at all, not very good ones. And I do agree that there was not any good boss battles, if any at all. However, I actually like the notion of there not being boss battles, and in this game, I think it was executed not in the best way. In other words, I think that the idea of not having boss battles, of having the story told in cinematics, in cutscenes, because if you think about it, a boss battle is inherently uncinematic. Boss battles don't really tell stories because you're playing and you're you're defeating this kind of insane, you know, like think about Arkham Asylum, you're you're throwing batarangs at Poison Ivy. That is not as intriguing, in my personal opinion, as a cutscene, um, or it doesn't progress the plot. And what they're going for in not having boss battles is having the real big cinematic moments instead of being told through gameplay, told through story, told through cutscenes. And some of you may not like that, some of you may, but what they were going for there is they're really trying to make the Arkham series in, into a movie. They're trying to make the story much more cinematic and kind of film-like. And I think you can look at a game like Arkham City that actually intertwines the story plot progressions with the boss battles very well. For example, you know, you have the boss fight with Mr. Freeze and then you get the cutscenes and the story and everything like that. I think some games do it very well. Some games maybe overuse boss fights and maybe the boss fights as well, something that the Arkham trilogy is done very well so it's not been too challenging sometimes you look at games maybe like fallout maybe some free roam games and stuff like that maybe potentially i would impose that the boss battles are so hard and and maybe frustrating to the point that it actually hinders the progression of the plot nonetheless i do actually hold the belief that i liked where they were going with that very plot driven story narrative kind of plot progression and in the end, it really didn't work out, but I really think it didn't work out because the plot was kind of lackluster to what we had in Arkham City. In other words, I don't think that actually boss battles mattered in the score of this game. I don't think I would rate this game any higher if there was this really brilliant boss battle, because the fact of it is the story that surrounds the boss battles has to be good, otherwise the boss battles are meaningless. Furthermore, I would like to assert that Batman Arkham Knight suffers from what we would call, or what we could call, the Dark Knight Rises Syndrome. In other words, the previous iteration of that, in the instance of The Dark Knight Rises, the previous film, was so good and so unbeatable that basically no film or game or whatever you're making can even hope to live up to the expectations of the consumer. Because the consumer is always going to expect things to get better. From Arkham Asylum to Arkham City, the game drastically improved in every single way. Gameplay, story, side missions, the depth of the world, etc. In every way the game improved. Going from Arkham City to Arkham Knight, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. Some would argue that the game took steps back in many instances, and I would agree with that to some degrees. Again, as he mentioned previously, EGP, he said that boss fights were better in Arkham City than in Arkham Knight, and in that way, there's a step back. So what EGP was expecting, and what we were all expecting, is boss battles that made the Freeze boss battle and the Clayface boss battle look like absolute dog shit. That's what we thought. That's what we were hoping for. We were hoping that the boss fights would be so brilliant and so good that it would make those boss fights look like something out of a 1990s Spider-Man game. So when you're expecting a amazing boss fight that's even better than the ones we had previously and you do not get one at all, then it's understandable that you are disappointed. 
Now, I totally agree with EGP on the point that he said that he went into the game with too high of expectations. I went into Batman Arkham Knight expecting a 10 out of 10. And if it was going to be anything less, then I was disappointed. That's literally, I said that, and I knew that in my mind. If the game was not a 10 out of 10, then I was going to be disappointed, because that's exactly what I was expecting. I was expecting a 10 out of 10, a game that would blow my mind. The reveal of Arkham Knight, the identity of the Arkham Knight, would be so intriguing and would blow my mind, and I would just be like, oh, it's him. I never thought that. I never would have thought that. And the game would just be so amazing, and the plot was at the end. Oh, with Scarecrow, it would be so good, and, and it turns out that this villain is actually not doing this, and, and I just thought my mind would be blown away, and the story would just be so amazing. I could not believe it and I would be restless at nights thinking about the game and just thinking about how amazing the story was and making theories but but that expectation didn't come true and the fact of it is the game was just good not amazing not brilliant that's all the game was the game was good it was 8 out of 10 that's it that's it it was not brilliant or amazing However, with that in mind, I don't think it's an excuse for some of the things that happened in the game. I think that there are many things that occurred within this game that do leave me kind of scratching my head. And one of EGP's arguments that he made in his own video is that the game didn't really feel right. When he ended, when he finished, it didn't have the same kind of satisfaction that Asylum, and especially City, in my personal opinion, had. It did not have that same satisfaction, I totally agree. When I was in that final cutscene and, you know, Batman puts... Scarecrow in a chokehold, I thought that we were going to see the end, and then when we drop off Scarecrow on the roof of the GCPD, and they hit us with the, uh, oh, subdue, eight more master villains, whatever they called it. And don't get me wrong, I get why they tried to incorporate the side villains more into the game, because they did have a higher stake in this game, but also the game, if you really think about it, was built on a false premise. I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but in Arkham City, all the different villains were competing against each other, which made Batman's job a lot easier because every villain had different intentions and motives and they weren't all in it for the same thing. This game was marketed in the trailers and, and the promotion of the game that Rock said he went around and promoting, they said that all the villains teamed up against Batman, which is furthest from the truth. You have every villain doing different things and they have side missions that are repetitive and you do the same thing in every one, whether it be... Uh, Two-Face, I mean, I guess you're doing the same thing every time. I, the, the only real difference is the area that you're playing in. But Penguin, is that they're all doing the same thing. And Firefly, and, uh, as he mentioned in his video, you're doing the same thing ag against every side villain in every situation. So really, the game actually faulted in making you play the side missions to actually get the ending of the game. The fact that I never saw the ending on my game until two, three months after I actually saw it. In other words, I actually had to look up on YouTube what happened at the end of the most anticipated game of basically the decade for me is nonsense. I really wanted to know what happened to Batman Arkham Knight. I mean, I went to GameStop at freaking midnight and played it for 14 hours straight when I got home just to find out what happened in the game. And I couldn't even do that. Ultimately, I think this game was poorly crafted in terms of an overarching story. And this is something like a remedy. Like I said, this was a very good game, and you have to you have to keep my perspective in mind of someone that expected a 10 out of 10 game. If you don't know that I was expecting a 10 out of 10 game, then you think that I hated the game from what I've said in this entire commentary, but that's totally not the case. Ultimately, guys, Arkham Knight lacked the conclusive finale, the mind-bending, just amazingly brilliant plot twist or ending that we really wanted in the Arkham series. Also, it lacked a serious sense of satisfaction in terms of the way the game actually ended, which I won't go into in case you don't know what happened, but those of you that have seen the Nightfall Protocol know exactly what I'm talking about. The game doesn't really have a satisfying conclusion to it in any way. Although it did fall short in many different aspects, I think it also succeeded in a lot as well. The map is very nice, very big, the graphics are great, the combat is the best it's ever been. And although this wasn't the final chapter of the Arkham series that I really wanted, this is the game that I spent the most time playing, and I really do love this game. It's a phenomenal game in, in almost every way. It falls short in some, no doubt, but overall, Batman Arkham Knight is a great game, and the final verdict for me on this game is that it is easily one of the best games of the year, and I'm really hoping that the game ends strong with some very good DLC. We got the Nightwing DLC coming up on Tuesday, and the season of Infamy, I really hope that kind of really recaps the Arkham series and the brilliance that it is, and just the amazing impact it's had on video games, particularly superhero video games. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, you can feel free to the like button. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. It'll be in the description below in case you do not follow me on Twitter. That account has only been remade for like a month or two months around that time. So be sure to follow me in the description below. My name's Slickmoff, and we'll see you later.